I'm going to talk about some of the uh, handouts that I gave in class and uh, go over some of the solution sets. So for uh, Quiz B, it's a fast food restaurant that uh, has the following scenario. So take a moment and uh, read the scenario yourself. Okay, I just don't feel that there's a, a need for me to read what's already in front of you. Now, the first piece here asks us to find the expected number of repairs uh, this kind of freezer is expected to uh, need each year. So the first thing I would do is set up the probability model. So go ahead and take a moment and set up that rectangular box we've been doing in class. All right, so let's keep in mind that in this particular situation, X represents the number of repairs. I'll try and stay neat here. The number of repairs, uh, specifically that the freezer is expected to need uh, in a year. And this is going to be um, a three-year contract, but this model right here represents you know, any particular uh, single year. So in a single year, there's about an 11% chance that the freezer will need one repair. There's a 4% chance that it will need three repairs. And it says that uh, none require more than three repairs. It's sort of a quasi-real situation. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my x values, the number of repairs, and put that in list 1, the probability of such repairs being needed, put that in list 2, and then what am I going to do? Hopefully you're saying what I just popped up on the screen here. I'm going to go to stat, calc, one variable stats, right, the only variable is the number of repairs, and I'm going to run one variable stats on L1, comma L2 is my frequency. L1 is my x list, L2 is my frequency list. And that's going to give me my, you know, when the calculator says x bar, that is the expect, uh, that is the uh, expected number of repairs each year, and uh, the standard deviation is going to be right in front of me. Let's take a look at what you should have gotten. I got uh, an expected value of x, so the expected number of repairs per year is 0.33 repairs, and a standard deviation of 0 .79, 0 0.749 repairs. That's what that little slop is down there in the corner. Now, what are the mean and standard deviation of the restaurant's annual expense? So we have an expected value of x for the number of repairs per year is 0.33, and a standard deviation of repairs is 0.749. Now, the cost of this thing is equal to $125, this thing being the contract, plus, right, you're going to pay $125 plus $35 times a repair. So if we expect 0.33 repairs, that's 125 plus 35 times 0.33, which gives us an annual cost of $136.55. Now with respect to the standard deviation of the expense, well, you're always going to pay this 125. That's not going to fluctuate. The question is, you know, plus or minus the number of repairs. So for your standard deviation of uh, cost, it's simply going to be the $35 times that standard deviation, which is $26.22. So your annual cost is $136.55, or your expected annual cost is that, give or take $26. Bucks. Well, and $0.22. Cents. Now we'll move on to answering or addressing the question, how many times should the restaurant expect to get this freezer repaired over the three-year term? So we know that we have an expected value of year one at 0.33. And it's going to be 0.33 for each year because each year should be reasonably independent of the year prior, although that doesn't matter for expected value. It does for standard deviation, however. So if we have three different years, what are we going to do? We're just going to add them all up. And what do we end up with? 0.99 repairs over the three-year lease. That's our uh, expected value. How about the standard deviation over the course of the three years? Well, our standard deviation for year one is 0.749. And 0.2 for year two, it's 0.749. And also for year three. So I'm looking at these standard deviations and... Remember, we can't add standard deviation, so what are we going to do? We're going to turn these into variance, right? So we're going to change this to variance, and we're going to add the three variances. 
And when you get the three variances, you should get uh, 1.683. And when you take the square root of that 1.683, you should arrive at approximately 1.297 repairs. So over the course of three years, I would expect to have 0.99 repairs with a standard deviation of 1.297. So be careful, are we dealing with cost? Are we dealing with the expected value or the number of repairs? That depends on how I want to handle things. Or I should say that guides me on how I will handle things. Now this is uh, question number two. Go ahead and read it on your own and press pause and come back when you're ready. Now keep in mind this question is a binomial where n appears to be 275 Right, n is equal to 275 customers. Um, a success would be uh, selling an item, and the probability of success is 0 0.04. Now, all they want on this first question is the mean and standard deviation. So your mean of x in a binomial situation is n times p, and the standard deviation of x is going to be equal to the square root of n times p times q. So it's pretty straightforward. Why don't you go ahead and see if you could fill all that in and get an answer. Press pause now. Okay, how'd you do? I got an average of, if she, if she truly expects 275 customers, and if truly only 4% of customers buy specialty clothes for their pets, um, then I would expect about 11 sales in that genre of sales with a standard deviation of 3.25 sales. Now the second question addresses the, you know, suspected by the high number of customers um, that perhaps the 4% estimate is too low. So it sounds like a lot of people bought clothes. Well, what would blow your mind? Uh, I remember at the beginning of the semester, we talked about plus or minus two standard deviations equaling sort of a wow factor after you go over two standard deviations. So that's basically, if we had an abnormally high amount of sales, then it must have been 11 plus 2 sigma, or 11 plus 2 times 3.25, which is going to yield us 17.5 um, sales, or, I don't know, approximately 18 sales would cause me to believe that uh, perhaps that number's too low. Otherwise, maybe it was just a off-sale day, you know, uh, not enough to cause me to think that it's more than 4%, but just, you know, it happened to be a little bit extra sales. With respect to the question where it says justify your answer, I would say something like showing the math that I just showed here and then saying that plus or minus two standard deviations is a wow factor and that pretty much speaks for itself as far as justification. It doesn't have to be a whole paragraph, just a, enough mathematical uh, whatnot, maybe a sentence explaining all of the math that I just did. The math is more of the show, the tell is my writing. Something like the following quote might be something I would uh, put into my notes and reread so that you understand exactly what it is I'm trying to say. Press pause now and copy it. And now for just one last scenario with a little bit more of a specific. This one's only in the video. Uh, Jeremy sells a magazine. Uh, chances of him selling the magazine is 9%. Uh, for each person he approaches, he's going to approach 40 people, find the probability that he will make two or fewer sales. So two or fewer, that means that two is included, so that's the probability of, remember we want to write a good solid statement, x less than or equal to two. This drives us to a binomial CDF in my calculator for n of 40, a p of 0.09, and an x of two. And then uh, just a return on the calculator, and that yields us an answer of 0.2894. Next, exactly four sales, so that's the probability that x equals four. That drives me to the calculator to go to binomial PDF. And n again is 40, p still is 0.09, and x for this case is going to be four. Enter my calculator yields me an answer of again. Rounding properly to the fourth decimal, 0.2011. And I guess I shouldn't say, again, this is a unique answer from the last one. Uh, our final question here, uh, more than five sales. So that's the probability of x being greater than five. Five is not included. So that's one minus the probability 
that x is less than or equal to 5. So that's 1 minus binomial CDF n of 40, p of 0.09, oops, almost made a typo there, and 5 is my x. And again, I would do this as um, one fell swoop on my calculator and yields us an answer of 0.1465. Now, I know I did say final question just a few seconds ago, but let's have one real final one. You know I love the at least one. What's the chance that Jeremy has at least one sale? Well, remember, that's always one minus the probability that he has no sales. So that's one minus the probability that x equals zero, because the number refers to, x is referring to the number of sales, which now in turn is one minus binomial PDF N P X, and then go for that on your calculator. I get 0 0.9770, so just 0 0.977 will do. There's a 97.7% chance that he will get at least one sale out of 40 people. That should wrap it up. Take care.